In December of 1995, Lisa McPherson died in Clearwater, Florida, under the watchful eyes of the Church of Scientology. Two years later, critics of the cult have gathered from around the world to honor her memory. The church has set out some welcome signs and hired their own photographers to cover the event. But there's hardly a Scientologist in sight. In fact, they put out a sign apologizing for their absence. But that doesn't dampen the spirits of the critics of Scientology, who gather together to talk among themselves and to speak to reporters. They are absent of integrity, honesty, compassion, and charity. The absence of the Scientologist does give the critics a chance to lay a wreath in front of the Fort Harrison Hotel in memory of Lisa. Lisa McPherson had been a devoted follower of Scientology for 15 years. Then in 1995, according to family and friends, she was trying to leave the church. She was coming home for Christmas in December of 1995 for the first time in many years. Then in late November, Lisa was involved in a minor car accident. The paramedics who arrived on the scene encountered an unusual situation. Lisa McPherson started tearing off all of her clothes and walking down the middle of the street. When they asked Lisa why she was doing this, she indicated that she was in trouble and she wanted somebody to pay attention to her. They took Lisa to a nearby hospital where they admitted her to the psychiatric ward. Shortly thereafter, eight members of the Church of Scientology came to take her away from the hospital. Lisa checked out against the doctor's orders. She was then taken back to the Fort Harrison Hotel, a Scientology-owned building, part of FLAG, the spiritual headquarters of Scientology. There she was held prisoner for 17 days under what the church calls baby watch. 24 hours a day she was under guard. For 17 days, no one was allowed to speak to her. If Lisa spoke to them, they were not allowed to answer. This is part of L. Ron Hubbard's introspection rundown. During these 17 days, the last 17 days of Lisa McPherson's life, she lost 40 pounds. She was severely dehydrated. Apparently, she had not had any water for at least five days. Scientology's own logs detail the horrors that she faced while locked in the Fort Harrison Hotel. By the time they decided to take Lisa to a hospital, it was too late. She died while under the care of the Scientologists. The church has been under investigation for Lisa's murder for the past three years. Now, finally, they have been charged in the death of Lisa McPherson. Now the Fort Harrison Hotel is very still. The absence of the Scientologists is quite odd. They're not back. Where are How they? Did they leave? Where are they? It turns out the Scientologists are conducting their own counter-protests picketing outside the local newspaper and police department. I see your sign? In a bizarre move to draw attention away from the small band of protesters, Scientology brought in 7,000 members to protest what they considered discrimination from both the police department and the St. Petersburg Times. The following morning, the protesters continue their peaceful picket in front of the Fort Harrison Hotel. Jeff Jacobson is one of the organizers of the picket. Here's Dennis Ehrlich, a former member of the church who himself was held hostage in the basement of the Fort Harrison Hotel. After leaving Scientology, Dennis had his home raided by the criminal cult, who claimed that Dennis posted copyrighted material on the internet. 
In the year prior to this picket, the church managed to get a restraining order against Dennis. The police painted lines on the sidewalk where he could stand. Is that the line there? What's that? Is this your There's line? No lines. You didn't draw a line for this time. No, I, I didn't go over on Cleveland. No individual. That's super. Is there a different side? Or is it the same thing? Scientologist PR man John Carmichael has come by to enjoy the picket. But for some reason, he doesn't want to talk. Yep. It is hey, gorgeous. Hey, give me another picture, dude. Well, the kids absolutely love Xenu. And the church loves kids. That's why they put up the Hubbard Winter Wonderland. It's a magical place, full of gingerbread houses, smiling elves, and vicious attorneys who will sue anything in sight. Oh, and don't forget to have your picture taken, kids. Lord knows there are plenty of cameras here in the Hubbard Winter Wonderland. Now this must be how Santa knows whether you've been naughty or nice. Yes, the cult has photographers everywhere. <laughs> don't miss Xenu here. This is what you get with OT3. Here's your first taste of advanced Sergio. knowledge. Sergio, here, give me on that. Come on, Sergio. Nice. I so this was the Clearwater Picket of 1997. This small band of critics have been brave enough to put themselves in the sight of the criminal cult of Scientology. They have managed to focus the attention of the media on the criminal activities of the church. And they continue to do that, despite the enormous pressure and harassment that's placed upon them by the Church of Scientology. Let's get our websites together here. And they'll continue to tell the story of Lisa McPherson.